Hello and welcome to story time number three. Right, here we go. Chapter 44, The Patient Robot. After being trapped on Hilltop Farm for nearly a year, Ros was now free to run away any time she liked. But without Bright Bill to guide her, she wouldn't make it very far. So the robot patiently waited for spring to come and for her son to return so they could begin their long journey home together. Chapter 55. Chapter 45 even. The barn conversations. As winter dragged on, Ross spent more of her time inside with her with the herd. There were long stretches of quiet. The cows chewed their hay, the robot tapped the farm computer, the wind gently rattled the windows. And then someone would start talking, someone else would chime in and the quiet of the barn would gradually be overtaken by conversations like these. I'm so bored, Tess was staring at the floor. I can't wait until spring when I can wander through tall grass and feel warm sunlight on my back. I just hope I don't die of boredom first. Old Annabelle snorted. You young cows are spoilt rotten, she said. Your lives are so easy and still you find things to complain about. Tess rolled her eyes. Yeah, yeah, we should be grateful for what we've got. You've told us before. Well, you should be grateful for what you've got, said Annabel. I've lived on other farms and trust me, you have nothing to complain about. Tess couldn't help being curious and she said, what were on those other farms? Oh, oh, I'd rather not discuss them, said Annabel in a low voice. You see, I witnessed some terrible things on those farms. It was a blessing when I was moved here, but I often think about the animals I left behind. I hope they're okay. The old cow sank into thought for a minute. I know life here isn't perfect, she said at last. But we have so much to be grateful for. We have our lovely herd and we have the beautiful barn and... And we have Roz, added Tess. And we have Roz, Annabel turned and smiled at the robot in the corner. Roz listens to us and treats us... Roz listens to us and treats us with kindness and love. And she makes our lives as comfortable as she possibly can. We certainly will miss her when she's gone. Ros, why do humans need so much cow's milk? said Lily as the other calves crowded around her. It was a question they'd all been wondering about. Well, there are billions of humans in the world, explained Ros, and many of them drink milk and combine it with different ingredients to make different foods. What kinds of foods? said another calf. Butter and cheese and yogurt are made with milk, said Ros. Many desserts are also made with milk. What's a dessert? said someone else. A dessert is a sweet food eaten at the end of a meal. Popular desserts include cake and custard and ice cream. The only ans This answer only raised more questions. What is cake? What's custard? What's ice cream? Ros tried her best to explain these foods to the calves, but it wasn't easy. After all, the robot couldn't even perform the simple act of eating. How could she possibly describe the flavours and sensations of tasting delicious desserts? Lily interrupted. Just tell me this, Ros. When we're older, will our milk be used to make desserts? Yes, said the robot. The calf smiled. Then they trotted away, happy in the knowledge that someday they'd help to bring sweet and delicious things into the world. It is almost spring, said Roz to the herd. It is almost time for me to run away back home to the wilderness. I am sorry I must leave, but you will be as you will all be well cared for when I am gone. I promise. Cows began mooing from their stools. Don't worry about us, Roz. There's no need to apologise. We understand why you're running away. Lily poked her head through the railings of the stall and said, I could never run away to the wilderness. I would be too frightened. I'd love to roam through the wilderness, said Tess. It sounds so exciting. No wilderness for me, thank you very much, said Annabel. I just want a quiet, cosy life. 
I have plenty to fear in the wilderness, said Roz. However, I have more to fear here. I can never be my true self around humans, and so I must try to return to my home. I only wish I could do it by myself, she went on. But I need help. I could never escape from the farm without the children, and I could never find my way home without my son. I feel bad for asking so much of them. Don't feel bad, said Lily. Brightbill and the children want to help you. They love you. We all do. The farm won't be the same without you, Ros. But we know you're doing the right thing. The herd agreed with Lily, and throughout the barn, the cows quietly nodded their heads. Chapter 46. The Spring. With each passing day, the sun climbed a little higher, and the rays grew a little warmer. The last patches of snow melted away and the colour returned to the land. The pasture and the fields, the trees, they were all turning bright green, and the air slowly filled with the fresh smells of spring. Many of the cows had been steadily growing bigger, and now calving season had arrived. When the time was right, each cow went out into the pasture so her calf could be born in soft grass. The robot stood nearby, just in case anyone needed her help, but nobody ever did. Even the first time mothers knew what to do, even the first time mothers knew what to do instinctively, as, and soon newborn calves were frolicking around the farm. Spring was a happy, exciting time, and yet Ros was distracted. More and more, she found herself looking to the skies, hoping to see Bright Bill and his flock. She knew they were on their way. Chapter 47. The Dinner. Mr Sharif hopped out of the truck with his arms full of shopping bags. Shopping bags. He limped towards the farmhouse, dragging his leg in the usual way. And then he fell. Ros ran over, found the man sprawled on the driveway, groceries scattered all around him. Are you OK? she said, pulling him to the feet. I've forgotten what voice it is. It's a northern accent, isn't it? Oh, um, I'm fine, he grumbled. Ros started picking up the groceries and said, let me help you inside. A minute later, the two of them were stepping into the house. Jackets and hats hung from the pegs on the wall. Shoes were lined up beneath the bench. The man peeled off his boots and hollered, kids, it's time to cook dinner. Footsteps pounded across the ceiling, across the ceiling, and the children came flying down the staircase with their dog. Is Ros having dinner with us? said Jaya. Ros doesn't eat, said Jad. I know that, but she could sit with us. How about it, Ros? said Mr. Sharif. Come and join us for dinner. The robot stared at the family. The family smiled at the robot. Would you like me to do that? said Ros. In a very proper voice, Jad said, I would greatly enjoy the pleasure of your company for dinner. In a very improper voice, Jaya said, I order you to stay for dinner. The children didn't wait for a response. They snatched the groceries from Roz and scampered off. Oscar ran after them, barking, Is that food? It smells like food. I want food. The wooden floor creaked as Ros followed Mr Shari through the living room. A comfy chair and a sofa faced a darkened electronic screen. Above the fireplace hung a painting of a familiar old barn. Doorways led to the other rooms. Ros glanced into Mr Shari's office and saw a portrait of his family, including his wife. Mrs Shari was pretty, with dark curly hair and a bright smile. It was the same smile Ros saw on the children. Look, Jay is crying like a baby, said Jad giggling, came Jad's giggling voice from the kitchen. When Ros walked in, the girl was chopping onions with tears streaming down her cheeks. Ros, I order you to chop the onions for me, said Jaya, wiping her tears. The robot picked up the knife and in a flash, the onions were perfectly chopped and dumped into a bowl. Clearly, Ros was designed to chop onions. Ros, I order you, Ros, wrong voice again, Ros, I order you to take the night off, Mr Sharif laughed. The kids and I want to cook. We enjoy it. More vegetables were chopped, skittles started sizzling, delicious aromas swirled together, and before long, a magnificent meal was set out on the dinner table. Oscar positioned himself below to catch food scrapes, and everyone else took a seat. Mr Sharif turned to his daughter. Would you like to say, Grace? The girl lowered her head. 
Thank you, God, for this yummy food we're about to gobble down. Amen. Thank you, Jaya, said Mr Sharif with a wink. And thank you, Ros, for everything you've done for this past year. I had my doubts, but now I can't imagine what we'd do without you. The children looked at each other. Then the family grabbed their knives and forks and dug into dinner. A colourful leafy salad, a plate of sourced asparagus, creamy mashed potatoes and buttered bread and a tall glass of milk. The meal was beautiful, but as Ros scanned the table, her eyes kept returning to the roast chicken. It was about the size of Bright Bill. Suddenly, the robot was full of questions. Did chickens live happy lives? Did this chicken know it would be eaten? Were humans bad for eating animals? No, thought Ros. Humans are simply following their instincts, like all creatures, like Ros herself. At least the Sharifs honoured this animal by giving thanks and by turning it into a beautiful, nourishing meal. After he'd finished eating, Mr Sharif stepped out of the room and returned a moment later carrying a violin and a bow. Growing up, I dreamed of being a musician, he said, thumping back into his chair. He turned the instrument, put it under his chin and started to play. His bow, his bow glided back and forth. His fingers danced across the strings and a lovely old folk song filled the room. Mr Sharif tapped his foot at the notes and rang out soft and then loud, slow and then fast. The song ended with a flourish and the music faded to silence. Then he rested his violin on his knees. This instrument has been in our family for a very long time, he said, since the days when Cyrus Sharif first built the barn. The farm, even. Cyrus Sharif. Ros knew that name. She unsnapped a pocket in her tool belt and pulled out a small journal. I discovered this in the old barn, she said, handing it over. The children huddled around their father as, she took the, as he took the journal. They read their ancestor's name on the cover. Then they carefully opened it and turned the brittle pages. I've never seen this journal before, said Mr Sharif. It's a piece of our family history. Kids, look at how they used to milk girls. Ros left the Sharifs like that, examining the journal, learning about their family's history. But what about their family's future? Their lives were difficult. They needed help, and Ros was about to run away forever. As she marched back to the barn that night, the robot felt something like worry and confusion and guilt. Chapter 48, The Return The robot's feeling of worry and confusion and guilt went away as soon as she heard her son's voice echoing across the farm. Brightbill's flock appeared above the pasture, flapping and honking and laughing. They glided down to Roz and Brightbill took his place on his mother's shoulder. I told you we'd keep your son out of trouble, squawked Loudwing. Thank you, everyone, the robot spoke in her most cheerful voice. It is so good to see you all again. The cows trotted over, grinning and happily, grinning and happily mooing to the geese, while the herd of flocks caught up with the, each other, Ros and Brightbill slipped away to speak privately. What's the plan, Ma? said Brightbill. The plan is simple, said Ros. Tonight, under the cover of darkness, I will run away from this farm and then you and I will begin our journey home. And at that, we're going to leave it for today. So we will continue tomorrow.